Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 22. In this tutorial we are going to get our character to fire his weapon whenever he has it aiming and we press the appropriate button. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, we have our character able to aim his weapon. Next what we need to do is be able to have him fire his weapon along with a sound effect whenever he actually wants to, i.e. whenever we press the left mouse button when we already have the right one held down. So firstly, let's get some audio in here. So if we go to audio, go to effects, and we're going to bring in a pistol shot sound, which you can get from my website. If you head over there, go to downloads and assets, uh, go to Resident Evil, go to tutorial number 22, and you can download it for free. So. We have this in place, we need to place it into our game. And if we go to area control, we have the basic sound effects from the inventory there. So I'm gonna duplicate the INV close. I'm gonna add pistol shot over here and rename it to the same thing. So pistol shot. And it's just a quick half a second clip of pistol being fired. And obviously you can change the pitch or anything like that if you want to. So how do we make it so as we want to be able to fire the pistol, but only when it's aiming? Well, let's go to our script and that's in character and weapon mechanics. So it's actually fairly simple, but it is very specific where you need to place these lines of code. You can't just place them anywhere you want, where you think it would matter. Um, so firstly, we need to have the pistol shot variable. So public audio source and we'll have this as pistol shot semicolon so if mouse button down one is aiming is set to true so if the is aiming is set to true that means that down here we can have another if statement remember we've got that one to detect if we're moving uh, left and right or turning left and right I should say well we can have another one here to say if input dot get mouse button down and remember when i said that the number one is actually the right and zero is the left that means that we can put zero in here close bracket close bracket open curly bracket and hit return next what we need to do is we need to get the animation in place so if we head back into unity and go to our animation where we had the aiming. Well, now we have that firing. So let's hold control and press D on the firing. And I think I mentioned last time that I'm gonna rename it just to take out that space between fire and one. And I'm actually going to untick loop time just for now. Next, we need to place this animation onto our uh, soldier. And if you've lost the animator, up here remember all you need to do to get to it quickly is just go to the soldier here in the hierarchy and double click on the controller and it will take you straight to this so just drag and drop this fire one pistol into the animator so there's aiming and there is the firing so let's head back into our script and think about this logically so we need to be able to only fire this once before it resets if we have the lines of code that we need here, it means that we're going to infinitely be able to fire this weapon. That means we need to have a coroutine because we need to control how and when we fire this weapon. It also means that we're going to need to add an extra boolean to make sure that we can't fire it. So let's add that extra boolean first. So public bool is firing and by default that will be equal to false. So that also means that if input dot get mouse button down zero is uh, we need to add the double ampersand now because we need to say is firing equals false. That means that as soon as we pressed it, we need to say is 
firing equals true, just so we can't repeat this process. At this point, we now need to start that coroutine. So if we go and follow this line down, and beneath our update method, we have I enumerator. And I can't remember if I've mentioned it in this series before, but just be careful it doesn't default to I enumerable because I enumerator and I enumerable are two different things. And if you end up trying to declare it as an I enumerable, it won't work. Just make sure it is I enumerator. So we can call this anything we want. Um, let's have this as something relevant, obviously. And uh, let's say firing weapon, open close bracket, open curly bracket. So the first thing we're going to want to do is have the sound play out. So in this case, pistol shot dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. And after that, we need the animation to play, which is the firing. So it'll all be done on the player as we declared it in the last tutorial. So the player dot get component and spiky brackets animator. And open close bracket dot play. And in brackets and quotes, that animation. So like last time, I'm going to go back into Unity go to the animation, go to rename it, but just copy name of the animation and then paste it here and close quote, close bracket, semicolon. Now at this point, you have to determine just how quickly you want to be able to fire the weapon. Now we're going to do this uh, in a slightly clever ish kind of way, because depending on what the weapon is, we need the fire rate to be different. So we're going to add another variable at the top. Let's have this as public float, because this is quite likely going to be a decimal number most of the time. Uh, so yeah, public float and fire rate. By default, I'm going to make it equal to 0.5 F because it's a float, semicolon. So that now means that down here in firing weapon, we need to say yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets fire rate semicolon at this point we can say is firing equals false semicolon and the final thing to do to make sure all of this cycles back around is to make sure that where we have if input dot get mouse button down and firing is false, then after we've set is firing to true, we need to run that coroutine. So start coroutine, and in brackets, firing weapon. Uh, put too many brackets there. That's why that's gone a bit funny. And then open close bracket, close bracket and semicolon and save. Now, this will still function normally. Although we're, again, modifying how we're controlling our character, remember that the tank controls themselves are still set off until is aiming is equal to false. So if we head back into Unity now, and I'm going to just quickly check that everything is OK on our area control object. We can see there is firing and fire rate. So if this doesn't work as intended, we can modify this quite easily. So let's make sure that we can still move around. Yep, moving is fine. Let's check we can aim. Yep. And now let's see if we can fire. We cannot. So uh, it does help if we actually assign the pistol shot there. So the fact that it has brought up an error down here it does indeed mean that it has got as far as here. So it has indeed ran our coroutine. It just didn't want to do anything else because we didn't declare the variable. So let's add a pistol shot here. Let's go to console, clear the error and try once again. So let's right click and there we go. So you see there the animation itself has indeed stopped. So it only played the once. We need to modify this now to make sure that the animation itself does uh, somewhat reset. 
Uh, just to kind of show how this would work uh, theoretically. If we were to aim our weapon and fire, stop aiming, re-aim and fire, it would work. Essentially what that comes down to is adding one extra line of code to basically head back to aiming the pistol. So we can do that by placing this line of code right there. So after we've fired, we basically let the animation play out for however long it is, and then we reset back. And you can always modify some of these weapons, you know, to kind of speed them up a bit. Uh, so if we press play now, uh, let's just rotate, aim, fire. Okay, so you can see right there, he has indeed not done what he's supposed to. So this is one of those little quirks of Unity where it kind of, it, it does what it's supposed to do, but then decides it's not going to. Uh, I think what it comes down to is you can probably change it a little bit more. So if we uh, head to Animator, let's see what happens if we revert it to idle before carrying on. So let's have, instead of aiming one pistol, we have idle and save. Head back to Unity. And let's press play and see what effect we end up with now. You can see there, I'm still holding the right mouse button, but it will still do that. So that tells me that we can indeed have that aiming one pistol, but let's change fire rate to 0 0.25. Resave and see what we end up with now. I have a feeling it still won't work because we may need to reset the right mouse button, but let's see. There we go. It did work in the end. So all it was, we just needed a smaller um, amount on the fire rate. So let's just see if we can rapidly click the left mouse button just to see if it changes anything. There we go. So all it was in the end is just that smaller number on the fire rate. So we now have our, our weapon aiming. Oh, one more thing. Let, let me just check. Double check, I should say, that it doesn't fire. There we go. So left mouse button doesn't do anything, only when we have the right... I can't get my words out. The right mouse button down as well. So next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we're going to work on that rotational aiming. So when we're close to an enemy, i.e. we've got it in range, um, we just want to aim at it. So we need the auto aim towards our enemy. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.